Hey all, Board Game Rants here where you'll find everything solo, tabletop, gaming, and more. Space Empires 4X. I don't do many 4X games. Let's have a look at this one though, and I'll let you know what I'm thinking on the other side. Space Empires 4X. Bum bum! 4X, that stands for exterminate, extinguish, extrapolate, extraneous, and I, I'm not sure, actually. We're going to look. It says 4X right there. Explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. There we go. I don't have a lot of experience with 4X games, but... And this doesn't look like much. Tell you what, it looks like a bunch of cubes and dots and blandness. However, what you're going to be doing in this game, playing it solo, is starting off with your humble little base here. I've got a, a base that, that will produce 20 CPs. It's basically your resources. I've got a little shipyard here. <clears throat> well, a few shipyards, I should say. That's going to know how I have to build out of out of areas that have shipyards for most structures. I've got some colony ships here to, to three of them to start sending out to colonize new world. I got some scouts SC three scouts and I've got a miner here because while I'm exploring the great beyond here I'm going to come across minerals which will give me CPs again CPs are just your uh, cosmos money. Uh, I, I honestly don't remember what CP stands for. Anyway, but um, control points, critter points, child's play. I don't know. Anyway, CPs allow you to build your stuff. So you're going to you're going to be exploring your area. And, you, you know, depending on the color you pick, and I picked red here, I've got this red area that's inside these this dotted lines section. And those are. Kind of, I believe they're sort of the same for every color, whether you pick green, yellow, blue. There's sort of a set of tokens that sort of your inner space. And then you've got your outer band here. And that's these white tokens, which are taken randomly from a pool here. And you're going to be exploring and you don't know what you're going to find. You're going to find the black holes and stuff to try to suck you in. You're going to find, uh, as I was saying, minerals. You're going to find planets you can colonize and all sorts of of other stuff dangerous things especially out here in these outer bands you're going to come across a lot of danger it's just gonna you know if you move in there with a ship it's just you, you you're gonna die and that's all there is to it so you might want to be more careful when you're exploring a little little more risque out here and i have this set up so that i will be playing against two other ai opponents yellow over here green over there again that's me and one of the most beautiful things about this game is that there's a t another variant, another solo variant. So this, this you can play, and you can actually play with a third player, and I think they'd start down here. So you can play this game solo against up to three AIs, at least two, but up to three. There's multi-levels. And then, but, and that, that can be a bit to run, because, you know, there's, there's a whole other sheet here. The alien, I cannot, you'll be playing against the aliens, and you have to keep track of their economy, and there's... There's quite a bit to that. That's for, you know, the more, uh, if you really want the experience of the game playing multiplayer and you're, and you're up for learning the, the, the rules and stuff that apply to that, great. If you're not, there is a wonderful variant as well, the Doomsday Machine variant. There they are, one, two, and three, where this will be set up very similar, but you're not going to have these other alien races to keep track of. It's just going to basically be you and, and you want to explore your area. And then eventually a number of rounds in the first doomsday machine is going to come in and start coming after you. And then the second one, and then the third one, and you've just got to kill all three of them to win the game. But if they get in there and take out your base, well, then you lose the game. It's a very easy, relatively speaking, solo variant to run. And, and instead of having to deal with, with the fleets that each of these guys can, can create and, uh, and, and, you know, have to control all of that and keep track of all that, you can play this much more simple AI variant, the Doomsday variant, which is very easy to run, relatively speaking. Great way to learn the game and play against an AI just to get the basics under your belt. 
because there's there's a lot to it. There's you can you can play this game kind of in a basic mode, and then there's there's an advanced mode, which just just offers you more technologies, more ships, and stuff to get. And so you'll see over here to keep track of all your stuff. You've got this sheet. So you can, be, you can be writing a lot of stuff down here. And you can play in rounds, one, two, three, and on up. And each round you're going to keep track of stuff. Basically, what you've produced and then uh, what you're spending. And then what you have left. And then you carry anything over to the next. And it's just, there's only one type of resource, which makes it pretty nice. Just the CPs. So, you know, I, I might... You know, after the first round, I might only have my one colony out there, my home world, it had a 20 on it, so I might record a 20 here. Uh, maybe I, my miner went out and grabbed some minerals that gave me an extra five, so I'd put that there. Uh, don't have any pipelines set up. So yeah, so I'd have about 25 CPs to work with here. Maintenance, uh, if my all three of my scouts survive, well then each one takes up a CP to maintain. There is no turn order bid when you're playing solo, so I would end up with 22 subtotal CPs that I could spend on technology and spend on ships. And then you go down here, and you can see here on this left side is basically the, 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 the basics, where you can increase your technology and ship size, attacking, defense, tactics. This has to do with like initiative. Tactics is initiative. Uh, movement, how fast you can move around the bar board. Shipyards, how... how um, how functional your shipyards are, how effective they are at producing bigger and bigger ships. And uh, terraforming, exploration, terraforming helps. There's certain planets that are barren that you have to have this terraforming in order to technology to be able to colonize them. Exploration, that allows you, instead of having to move ships just into an area blindly and flip over that token and die maybe, this allows you uh, with certain ships, uh, a certain ship I should say, to explore around you without having to necessarily move into it. Send you little scanners out. And see. But then over here, well, I don't know if scanner is the right word. Anyway, um, it just allows you to look around you without moving into a space. And then over here, these are more of your advanced technologies. Fighters, point defense, cloaking, scanners, mines, mine sweeper. Um, so you, you, good idea to start the game here. And then eventually you'll, you'll work your way over here and learning all about this fun stuff, which adds tons and stuff to the game. The one drawback is if you're playing solo this is this is simplistic against the the doomsday variation where you just got those three ships that come after you kind of shuts down all of the um advanced variant stuff because it's just uh it, it keeps it simple that you'll roll a die and actually and there's a chance that they're weak against one of these things so you can still use these but they're not really usually worth developing you want to you want to focus here and then eventually, if you find that one of the machines has weakness against, you know, raiders or a weakness against, you know, can be affected by mines, then you might research that technology. But um, so that that simpler variant is, is much more simple to learn and run, but it does it is limiting. Whereas when you play what I'm playing over there, what I've got set up for where you're playing against aliens, two different factions, well, then you're going to be fighting, you know, fleets full fleets against full fleets and there's all that tactical stuff that goes in with that and so um so it's much more realistic but it is a lot more to keep track of there so because you got here you're going to have their own things you're going to be rolling a lot of dice to to figure out what the uh the ai is going to do when you're playing the alien ai variant and and there's you know lots of different things that are going to occur here you're going to roll some dice each round that's going to tell you how many CPs they're going to get to build fleets or to develop their technology and uh, your defense. Eventually, you you win by you win the one the simple variant by destroying all three doomsday machines. You win the more involved alien AI opponent variant by actually going over and conquering each of their homeworlds. So far more far more involved that one is, but. You know, there's just nothing like it. Nothing like sending these scouts out. You know, you'll send your stuff out and then you get to start just flipping over. You start exploring, seeing what you found. Found some asteroids there. Found some minerals here. Found some, oh, found Fion. If I'm saying that, there's a, a habitable planet. So then, then my next turn goes and... I might send these scouts out here to just keep exploring the great beyond. 
But now I'm going to send a colony ship over here, crash into Fion, start developing. There's a number of rounds this, this colony will get developed more and more and produce more and more CPs. Eventually it'll produce five CPs for me. <clears throat> but first it'll produce one, then three, then five. This miner can go down here, grab those mine. Uh, grab that mineral and he'll haul it back. That's going to be worth some CPs as long as it ends up at a, at a colony. So, and you'll go out and, and like I said, you're going to find black holes. You're going to find <clears throat> other, sometimes you'll find little, little ship parts that'll help you upgrade. You'll find warp points. You'll find, there's all sorts of stuff out here to be explored. And round after round, you'll, you'll play and you'll just kind of cycle through. There's three turns in each round. And then, and then it kind of walks you through your your economic phase where you you get all your money, and then you build your units and build up your technology. Then you place your units. Then you increase your colonies. I was kind of describing how the colony size goes up incrementally. Wow, oh, it's actually not too much to explain, but there's a lot of a lot going on in this, and also some good reference cards here as well. Let's talk about what I think about this. So this is my first Jim Crone, I believe is the designer's name, game. I don't do 4X games. I've looked at Space Empires 4X for years. And well, I mean, I shouldn't say I don't do 4X games. I've played Eclipse. I've played uh, not, a, not a lot. I guess maybe there's some others I'm, I'm sure that are, that are toned to that. I can never remember what the 4Xs stand for. Because I just don't, you know, and especially this style of, of game. It's just, I'm kind of a component junkie. I like the fun, fancy bits. I like the production qualities. I like the show, the showmanship of a game. And of course, the game itself has to be good, right? But this game I'd heard is good. And, and it was very high rated from a solo standpoint. But I just kept passing up on it, passing up on it, because it just, I mean, I have to berate myself a little, because it just didn't look good. I was judging the book by its cover. I, it literally was. And it just, it's just like, eh, you know, it just, when you have so many other games out there and, and that, that in production quality has become such a thing anymore, I kept passing up on it. And, and then, <laughs> you know, it's funny, because then eventually it goes not out of print, but it just became hard to find. And that's when I was like, eh, you know, Kind of want, what kind of want it. So then I really started looking for it and looking for it, and then I couldn't find any kind of deals on it. I was looking for it, and I was like, you know what? When that comes available again, I'm picking it up. Well, turns out it's at my friendly local game store, and there it was. So I picked it up, you know. And then once I got it, you know, I'm on, you know, I'm looking at. It. I hadn't even unwrapped it. I'm like, eh, you know, it's, <laughs> it just doesn't. Oh, I have been missing out. I'm just in short order. I have been missing out. I have been doing myself a disservice by not picking this game up sooner. It's fantastic. It is. I mean, the the theme is is just what you might think it is. You know, you start off with a little home world and some sh some ships, and you just start spreading out. And there's just something, just so terrifically addictive. Of I mean, these this bland looking board with these these silly little you know square chits. What's under them? <laughs> you, you've got to, when you're playing solo, whether you're playing the, the two different variants that I explained, you've got to build up your economy and you've got to do it fast. But how you build it and where you spend your time and which direction totally depends on where these, what flips up where. You know, you might just find you have a ton of mining you do. So you might make another miner so you grab all these minerals because your planets you're going to colonize are a little further out. So you got to make it up somewhere. But other times, you all your planets are real close. The mining is outside, and you got to take a different approach. When you're playing the advanced rules, you can set up these merchant ships, these these pipelines that that'll that'll bring in income and allow you to move around the board faster without upgrading your movement. If you find you run into black holes and in, in dangerous outer space, you're going to lose a lot of ships. So you may have you may get lucky and don't have to develop. Your, you know, your ability, your technology to, to, to scan around and stuff. But other times, you're not going to get so lucky. And it just, and, and every little, 
every little token is just such a pleasure to flip, even though it's so generic looking or whatever. It's just, you know, each color too, be it red, blue, yellow, green, like has a, I've only played with blue and then and now red. And they have different, the, the planet names are different. And even the ship, the little, the little tiny ship illustrations on them are different for all the different things. You got, you got battle cruisers, you got destroyers, you've got dreadnoughts, you've got miners, you've got mine sweepers, you've got scouts, you've got bases, you've got all just a arsenal of of different things to be able to build. And and depending on just a tremendous number of factors, you're gonna you're gonna go a different direction. And also too, depending on the different modes that you're playing, you're gonna go a different direction. But you absolutely feel like you're just exploring space. And uh and and you know, so from a thematic standpoint, it just sits so well, just exploring and, and conquering and just just moving outward and and just into the great beyond. And, and it's a different experience each time. But, you know, it's, there's certainly some as I played a good number of times now, but but it's something I look forward to. It's just like how okay, I know what to do in this situation. Well, I don't know what to do, but I, there's varying levels on there and I've only beat it on on normal a couple of times. You know, they're still hard and extremely hard and, and to get into and, ugh, you know, I can't imagine. But um, but it's great that that's, that's, you know, there. The mechanics are just, they're so beautifully done. I mean, when you look at it and you look through the rule book and then you've got a scenario book and then you've got all these sheets to kind of keep track of all your stuff. But as I kind of went through it, you know, just through a column, it's pretty straightforward. You know, again, you just kind of, you're going to, at the end of each round, you got to go out and look, you know, how your colonies develop, what's bringing out, know, got any minerals, count up your, your CPs, and then you get to spend them. And then next round, you take three turns each round, you, and you move everything, and then you battle and explore. And then, uh, and then, you know, you do that three times. And then you, you, that's a round, and then you keep track of well, how much money did I get now? And that's going to change based on you exploring and developing colonies and, and, and ship lines and pipelines and stuff. And then also, too, later on in the game, it's going to change as, as maybe <laughs> as things come in and start destroying stuff. And so you start retracting. But if you can build it big enough, then your retraction is enough to just hold you over to take out that last home world or take out that last doomsday machine. Ugh. Anyway, moving on. This is, It's just a great experience. It really is. And... The something to, worth mentioning here is that I didn't quite realize how much is is lost in gameplay when you've got these beautiful components. Now I would never trade any beautiful, but what I guess what I'm getting at is here you have a game that's just got very mundane looking, but it but it absolutely leaves it up to you and your imagination. You you know you, it's it's you get into it in a way that's much like probably just reading a book, you know, as opposed to watching a movie. You watch a movie, you're looking for all the special effects and stuff. But when you're reading a book, a good book can, can kind of draw you in and you can just imagine stuff happening and, and you don't have anything to lean on, you know, beautiful looking miniatures or whatever. You just have to kind of let your mind go. And this game does that. And, and so even though I don't have cool ships and stuff that I'm moving around and vibrant colors and pieces and whatnot, because it kind of swings so far the other way, it's just like, it almost allows me to let my imagination run wild with this game. And it does, and you and it just draws you in, much like a book would. So anyway, I just, I just found that an interesting observation, you know, with the lack of the, the, the shininess, uh, I still found it just so incredibly engaging because it goes, it swings so far to the other side, you have no choice. And, and you want to see yourself in this battleship and in this dreadnought taking on, you know, these doomsday machines because they are battles. You know, it's, it's a dice driven battle and it's so well done that, you know, and there's not a whole bunch of things to keep track of. Like when you're playing, you know, fantasy and role playing games, you, sometimes you got to keep track of, you know, there's a plus one for this and you're wearing this and you got that and you, you buffed yourself here and you're a plus one for that, minus three for that, add it all up. here. There's there's a little of that, but it kind of kind of it's it's very you can't really change it while you're you're playing. Well, I mean you change it while you're playing, but but between battles is when you change it. Then when you get into your battle, uh, you you just got kind of a set numbers, and so you, you can just start rolling. Okay, they're going, I'm going, 
they're going, I'm going, they're going, I'm going. It's just, and things get whittled down and very easy to keep track of with, 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 with all that's involved. It's very easy to keep track of. So very impressed just, just from, from a mechanical standpoint, this game, uh, knocks it out of the park. You know, it's just, uh, uh, it's just a thing of beauty, you know, and this is it's fourth edition. It's come out 2011. Oh, it's been out a long time. And over those four editions, I think they've refined it and refined it and refined it. I don't know. I just, maybe it was better that I waited this long because I, I, I enjoy it. You know, so the variability is so tremendous because you're setting up the, and you've got the two different variants, which is so awesome. It's going to appeal to that person that, that, like me, that really loves to play the game like you would if you were playing against others. But it also has a great way to learn the game. Playing against the Doomsday Machines is very simple, very easy to run and, and get you up and going. And, uh, and the length of play, you know, you're looking at about a, a good hour and a half to two hours if you're playing, you know, uh, hour and a half for the Doomsday Machines. And, but you can play with a smaller map and a bigger map. So you've got that. Then you've got, you can, you can change the difficulty levels. And then you've got the two separate variants. Incredible variability here. Um, and a good, good length of play for, what, for all that you're doing there. Again, hour and a half to two hours. Once, once you start really getting to know the, the game, because the zip spot. The rule book is, is um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a GMT rule book. It, it's very well laid out and not difficult to, to follow. It's just there's a lot of information to, to get, to take in. Definitely worth playing just the basic version against Doomsday Machines first, maybe a couple times. Get that under your, 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 you know, get your feet wet with that and then sink into the advanced stuff, then sink into playing against the, the alien races. Solo, this, I mean, I've not played it multiplayer. This is, this is a gem. It really is. And, uh, man, I wish I had had this game in my life a little earlier because it's just such a refreshing break too, just from, from, from other games that I normally get into, you know, like fantasy role playing and, and adventure games. It's, you know, this is an adventure game, but it's, um, but it just has, Oh, it's just refreshing. Just like it's such a palate cleansing experience for me. Uh, I love this game. And, uh, you know, the fact that it has all of these, these variants and ways to tweak the difficulties, I mean, just makes this the, the value in this game for, for all that it offers. Not, not for so much it's a component quality, but you know what you're going to get. I already knew that I was just going to get a bunch of little chits and a board and some dice, and then I was going to have to write out my my stuff each game. You know what you're going to get. And so I didn't, you know, you don't feel cheated by paying, I don't know, it's kind of a standard $60 game, 65 bucks. But, standard, gosh, 10 years ago that was not standard. Anyway, and, but there's so much to sink your teeth into and so many different ways to experience this game and so many so many variables like if i just want to just a short quick little just want to just bash some doomsday machines i can play that variant it plays quick it sets up quick especially when you have this game set up you don't have there's not a lot to to reset once it's all out there it is a lot to get all your little chits out there but once it's all out there you're playing a game and then resetting is surprisingly quick and uh, I have yet to put it away. <laughs> I've just been playing, 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 playing it. So anyway, I better stop. I could go on about this game. I love this game. If you're into forex games, or you know, into this style of game, this is. I feel like it's opened a door for me here. Now I'm, I'm looking forward to ex, you know exploring other. I think there's a game called Talon that he's come out with. So I might have to check that out. Anyway, until next time. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Board Game Rants, and I'm out!